Okay, so the next thing that we have here is a couple of exercises. So let's say that, for example, you have something like you have something like um, you have something like, for example, one over two x plus one over 3y is equal to is equal to 2 and 1 over 3x plus 1 over 2y 1 over 2y is equal to is equal to 13 sixth 13 sixth so in order to basically um, and you want to to basically substitute something in these equations so that they are in the form of a of pair of linear equations and so that you can solve them using the method methods that we know of these pairs of linear equations so i can write this as uh, basically i can write this pair of equations as uh, basically 1 over 2 times 1 over 1 over x plus one third times one over y is equal to two and then here I can write one third times one x one over x plus one half times one over y one over y that's equal to thirteen sixths and now I can substitute I can substitute, for example, P for 1 over X and Q for 1 over Y. Okay, so, so then you will get basically 1 half times 1 over X is equal to P. 1 half times P plus 1 third times Q is equal to 2 and then you have and then you have for example something like 1 third times times p 1 third times p plus 1 half times q is equal to 13 sixths okay and um, And then, to make this still a little bit simpler, you can multiply both both of these equations by a factor of 6. And if you do that, basically, you will get rid of all of these denominators, because all of these denominators, 3 and 2, are divisible by 6. So, I write this as um, basically multiplying every, every term over here by 6, I get... I get 6 over 2, which is equal to 3p. 6 over 3 is equal to 2q. And 6 times 2 is equal to 12. And then 6 times 6 times 3 is equal 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2p. Plus uh, 6, 6 over 2 is equal to 3. So 3q is equal to 6. And 6 will cancel out. And then you'll have a 13 over here. And this is basically now a pair of linear equations, but simplified enough that you can solve them easily. So what you can do is that you can simply cross multiply. If you want to cross multiply, you can write this as you can write this as p, q, and one, and here you can write b, c, a, b. And then remember that, of course, these two are supposed to be on the other side of the equation, meaning that your this is C1 and C2. So uh, when you want to write them here, you have to write the, the algebraic opposite of these, these two terms. Otherwise, you would write these equations as 3P plus 2Q minus 12 is equal to 0. And you would write this as, for example, 2P plus 3q minus 13 is equal to 0. Okay. 
so you can use this or or you or without writing this you can remember that basically negative you can you need to enter the algebraic opposite of these two terms as c1 and c2 over here whichever one is more conf is more convenient to you and then you have basically your b over here so b is basically we take b as the as the coefficient of the second variable so 2 and 3 so 2 and 3 over here 2 and 3 over here and c would be negative 12 and negative 13 and a would be 3 and 2 okay and then you can write this as p over so 2 times negative 13 is equal to negative 26 minus um, 3 times 12 is equal to 36 so that's negative 36 so plus 36 is equal to q over 2 times negative 12 is equal to negative 24 minus um, 3 times 13 is equal to 39 negative 39 so plus 39 is equal to 1 over 9 minus 4 and 36 minus 26 is equal to 10 p over 10 um, 6 20 so p over 10 and then that's equal to q over 39 minus 24 is equal to 15 is equal to this is q 9 minus 4 is equal to 5 so that means that p over 10 is equal to 1 over 5 divided by 5 1 divided by 5 2 p over 2 is equal to 1 so um, p is equal to 2 p is equal to 2 and also q over 15 q over 15 is equal to 1 over 5 divided by 5 1 divided by 5 3 q is equal to q is equal to 3 here okay but here we said that we said that um, basically p is equal to 2 q 3 so p is equal to 2 and q is equal to 3 okay but here we said that p is equal to 1 by x so that means that 2 is equal to 1 by x. So that means that 2x is equal to 1. 2x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 1 by 2. That's the value of x. And then here we said that q is equal to 1 by y. q is equal to 1 by y. So q was equal to 3. 3 is equal to 1 by y. So 3y is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 thirds so that's the value of x and y in this in this exercise so let me see let me check the answers here Six. 1 by 2 1 thirds okay so let's do one more of these Let's do one more of these. For example, let's say you have 2 over square root of x, 2 over square root of x plus 3 over square root of y is equal to 2. And then you have 4 over square root of x minus 9 over square root of 9, square root of y, I'm sorry, square root of y is equal to negative 1. So, so what you can do is that you can rewrite this as, you can rewrite this as um, 2 times 1 over square root of y, square root of x, plus 3 times 1 over square root of y is equal to 2. And this one over here, you can write it as 4 times 1 over square root of x minus 9 times 1 over square root of y 
is equal to negative 1. So now in this, in over here, you can substitute You can substitute one basically p4 for example you can substitute p4 for 1 over square root of x and q4 and q4 1 over square root of y okay so then this this these two equations become two two times p would be two p plus three q is equal to two and four p minus nine q is equal to negative one and now you can solve these two equations meaning that you can write you can use cross multiplication you can write for example um, p q and 1 and then here you can write um, b c a b so b c a b b is 3 and negative 9 3 negative 9 3 negative 9 and a is 2 and 4 2 and 4 and c is the algebraic opposite of these two because they are supposed to be on the other side negative 2 and 1 negative 2 and 1 and then you can cross multiply so if you cross multiply here you will get 3 times 1 is equal to so that that means that p over 3 minus uh, 18 3 minus 18 is equal to q over uh, negative 8 minus 2 is equal to 1 over negative 18 minus 12 so that's that's p over negative 15 is equal to q over negative 10 is equal to 1 over 20 30 negative 30 So then you can write this as p over negative over negative 15 is equal to 1 over negative 30. So that means that you can cancel these two out and then 1, 2. So uh, p over 1 is equal to 1 by 2. So p is equal to 1 by 2. And q over here, q over negative 10 is equal to 1 over negative 30 these two you can cancel out 1 3 and q is equal to 1 3rd okay so 1 1 half and 1 3rd So here we said that um, here we said that basically p is equal to one over square root of x, one over square root of x. So p basically was one by two. One by two is equal to one over square root of x. So if you take the the, the reciprocal of both sides of this equation. The square root of x is equal to the square root of x is equal to two. That means that that means that x is equal to and if you take the square root of both sides of this equation, if you take the square root of both sides of this equation, you will have. Uh, um, you will have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 right and we will see about that which 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 answer is actually acceptable so x is equal to is equal to plus or minus square root of 2 
and also here we said that q is equal to 1 over square root of y 1 over square root of y so and here basically q is equal to 1 thirds so 1 thirds is equal to 1 over square root of y so then you can say that then you can say that square root of y is equal to 3 or y is equal to plus or minus square root of 3. Now if you come back to these equations that you had over here, if you come back to these equations, I think I made a mistake over here. No, no, I made a mistake over here. Sorry. So if you take the square root of two, no, 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 this is this is actually wrong. So here we said that here we said that p is equal to one over square root of x, and p was here equal to one by two. So 1 by 2 is equal to 1 over square root of x. So that means that if you take the reciprocal of both sides of this equation, you'll get square root of x is equal to 2. And if you raise both sides of this equation to, to, to basically to the second power, you'll get x is equal to plus or minus, plus or minus 4. Okay? Plus or minus 4. And um, and and also here we said that q. Here we said that q is equal to uh, one over square root of y. One over square root of y and q was one thirds. So one thirds is equal to one over square root of y. And then uh, and then now uh, what you have here is. Then take the reciprocal of both sides of this equation, you get square root of y. Square root of y is equal to 3. Now if you take, if you raise both sides of this equation to the second power, you'll get y is equal to the plus or minus 9. Okay? So x is equal to plus or minus 4, and y is equal to plus or minus 9. Now if you come back to if you come back to basically your original equations over here, you see that uh, x is the argument of a of a square root function, and y is also the argument of a square root function. So negative four cannot be accepted here, or negative nine cannot be accepted here because the argument of a square root function has to be a positive value, except that you are working in 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 some specific situations where the where the the argument of the square root function is actually can actually be a negative value otherwise normally the square root function or the principal square root function is the kind of function that takes only positive values so for general cases <coughs> For general cases, I'm going to discard the negative, the negative 4 and negative 9 and write x is equal to 4 and y is equal to positive 9. Unless you know what you're doing and, uh, and, and the, and the negative squared and then the, and the, basically the argument of the square root function can actually be a negative number in that case then you can of course take the negative numbers into account as well otherwise you cannot do that so then um, so then basically if x is equal to positive 4 and y is equal to negative positive 9 
over here, you can verify your equations as, for example, the, the equations that we had were 2 over square root of x plus 3 over square root of y is equal to is equal to 2 and if x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 9 you have 2 over square root of 4 <coughs> plus 3 over square root of 9 which is equal to uh, 2 over 2 plus 3 over 3 is equal to 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 which is basically the value that you get here and also we had another equation 4 over square root of x minus 9 over minus 9 over square root of y was equal to negative 9 if you set x as positive 4 4 over square root of 4 minus 9 over square root of 9 what you will get is 4 over 2 minus 9 over 3 is equal to 2 minus 3 which is equal to negative 1 which is which is basically the answer that we got here <coughs> so <coughs> so basically what you do with with your answers over here the plus or minus 4 are, or plus or minus 9 depends on the situation in which you're solving this problem if the if basically that situation in that situation you're allowed to take the square root of a negative number then you do that otherwise you don't do that and uh, this is just a hypothetical situation i don't i mean i'm not using this i'm not using these equations in any specific situations so in general cases what you what we do in mathematics we discard those negative answers otherwise they could actually be useful in specific situations <clears throat> okay so so that is that now the next question that we have is um, is um, basically 4 over x is 4 over x uh, plus 3y is equal to 3y is equal to 14 and 3 over x 3 over x minus 4y is equal to 23 and you want to solve these equations so what you can do is that of course your your y is um, um, you don't have to substitute anything for your y but for your x you have to do something meaning that you can write you can write this as 4 times 1 by x plus 3 times y is equal to 14 and 3 times 1 by x plus minus minus 4 times y is equal to 23 <coughs> so now you can <coughs> so now you can substitute you can substitute for example p4 p4 for example um, 1 by x here and then you will get 4p for example plus 3y is equal to 14 and over here 3p minus 4y is equal to 23 okay and then you can use cross multiplication meaning that you can you can write p y and 1 over here and b c a and b over here so um so your b would be 3 and negative 4 3 and negative 4 3 and negative 4 over here c would be the algebraic opposite of these terms <coughs> which is negative 14 negative 23 
negative 14, negative 23, and your A would be uh, 4 and 3. 4 and 3 over here. So then to solve this, to solve this basically are P and Y and 1. So P over um, basically 3 times 23 is 69. So negative 69 minus 4 times 14 is equal to 40, 16, 56. And this is a 9. Is equal to is equal to y over um, negative uh, thirty forty two minus four times twenty three is eighty and so four times twenty three is eighty plus twelve which, which is equal to ninety two and that's negative ninety two so plus ninety two and that is equal to and that is equal to 1 over negative 16 minus 9. Negative 16 minus 9. So then what you have here is 69 plus 56 is equal to uh, 70 plus 56 is 126, 125, negative 125. So P over negative 125. And this is 92 plus 42, let's say 90 plus 40, 40 plus 92 is 132. No, actually this is subtraction. So uh, 92 minus 40 is equal to 52 and 50. Y over 50. And this is 16 and 9 is equal to 1 over negative 25. So... So you have P over negative 125 is equal to 1 over negative 25. And 5 times 25 is equal to 125. 25 times 5 is equal to 2 and 125. So these two can cancel out. And then 1, 5, P divided by 5 is equal to 1. So P is equal to 5. P is equal to 5. And y over 50 is equal to 1 over negative 25. And then you can divide by 25, 1 divided by 25, 2. <coughs> so then y is equal to negative 2. y is equal to negative 2. Okay. So then your y is equal to negative 2, p is equal to 5. So y is equal to negative 2, p is equal to 5. Now here we said that p is p is equal to, was equal to 1 by x. That means that, uh, that means that 5 is equal to 1 divided by x. So 5x is equal to 1. So x is equal to 1 fifths. x is equal to 1 fifths x is equal to one-fifths. So that's the value of your x. That's the value of your y. Now let's test this. Um, uh, let's test these answers. One-fifths and negative two. x is equal to one-fifths and y is equal to negative two. So if you, if, you, if you test this over here, you get, for example, one of the equations was four divided by x plus 3y is equal to 14. So x was 1 fifth, so 4 over 1 fifth is uh, 4 times 5, which is equal to 20. And 3y is equal to negative 6, and that's 20 minus 6 is equal to 14, which is equal to this thing over here. The other equation that you had was uh, 3 over x, was 3 over x <coughs> minus 4y is equal to 23. So 3 over x was basically 1 fifths. 3 over 1 fifths is the same thing as 
is the same thing as 3 over 1 fifth is the same thing as 3 times 5 divided by 1 which is equal to 15 okay so I write 15 over here 4y is basically 4 times negative 2 which is equal to negative 8 and this is equal to 15 plus 8 which is equal to 23 and that's the number that you get here so <clears throat> so let's do let's do one more of these let's do for example this one over here Okay, so now let's do one more of these basically these examples, and that is five over x minus one. Five over x minus one uh, plus one over one minus two. One over y minus two is equal to two, and six over x minus one. Six over x minus one minus 3 over y minus 2 3 over y minus 2 is equal to 1 so what you can do is that you can write this these two equations as for example 5 times 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 times basically 1 over y minus 2 and that's equal to 2 okay and then and then you can write this thing as uh, um, basically 6 times 6 times 1 over x minus 1 minus 3 times 3 times 1 over y minus 2 is equal to 1 now you can you can substitute you can substitute uh, p for for example 1 over x minus 1 and q4 and q4 1 over y minus 2 okay so if you do that what what you will get is basically 5 times 1 over x minus 1 is basically p so 5 times p plus this is q plus q is equal to 2 and 6 times p 6 times p minus 3 times q is equal to 1 and now you have a pair of linear equations that you can that you can actually solve <coughs> so here you can use the method of for example elimination meaning that if you take this as equation number one, equation number two, if you multiply one by, if you multiply one by, um, one multiply it by the factor of three, what you will get is basically five times, three times five is equal to 15 P, and three times Q is equal to three Q is equal to six, and then you can, if you basically add these two equations together, if you add these two equations together, what you will get is 0 over here, and 6 plus 15 is equal to 21p. 21p is equal to 7, so p is equal to uh, 7 by 21, which is 1 one third. So that's one third. So, so that that means that p is equal to one third. Now, if you can substitute p in any of these equations, for example, in this one over here, so six times p. So equation number two. Equation number two, six times one third. Six times one third minus three q is equal to one. And six six divided by three is equal to two, so that's equal so 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 then you have two minus three q is equal to one, 
negative 3q is equal to 1 minus 2 which, which is equal to negative 1 so these two you can cancel out so q is equal to 1 thirds q is equal to 1 thirds so so here we said that here we said that p is equal to 1 divided by p is equal to 1 divided by x minus 1 and so p is basically 1 thirds is equal to 1 over x minus 1 that means that x minus 1 is equal to 3 that means that x is equal to 4 and over here we said that q was equal to 1 over y minus 2 so q was basically 1 thirds here so that's equal to 1 over y minus 2 what that means is that y minus 2 is equal to 3 that means that y is equal to 5 okay now you can take any of your equations in order to verify your answers so you have for example 5 over x minus 1 plus 1 over y minus 2 was equal to 2 for example so now 5 over x minus 1 would be 3 plus 1 over y minus 2 would be 1 over 3 is equal to 6 thirds which is equal to 2 which is basically this value over here and if you verify that the other equation as well you will get the right answer hopefully you will of course so so now let's let's do another one of these let's do another one of these so let's say that you have 7x minus 2y 7x minus 2y over xy is equal to 5 and 7x minus 2y over xy is equal to 5 and x 8x plus 7y 8x plus 7y is equal to over xy is equal to 15 so so then what what you need to do here is basically what you can do is that you can take xy as um, or 1 over xy as uh, let me see okay so there is one way that you can solve this problem and that is basically by breaking up this up, uh, basically this fraction you, you, meaning that you can write this as 7x over xy minus 2y over xy and that's equal to 5 okay and then x and x you can cancel out so you will have 7 over y minus and then y and y will cancel out so you will have 2 over x is equal to 5 <coughs> and then here you can write 8x over xy plus 7y over over xy you can write it as 15 okay and then x and x you can cancel out y and y you can cancel out so you have 8 over y 8 over y plus 7 over x is equal to 15 okay and now you can you can write this as you can write this as um, basically you can substitute substitute for example p for 1 over y and q for 1 over x 
meaning that you can write this as um, you can write this as 7 times 1 over y minus 2 times 2 times 1 over x is equal to 5 and then you have 8 times 1 over y plus 7 times 1 over x is equal to 15 and and then when you do the substitution what you will get is 1 over y is p so 7 times p minus 2 times q is equal to 5 and then here 8 times p and then here 8 times p plus 7 times q is equal to 15 okay and now you can use for example cross multiplication in order to solve this in order to solve this 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 basically pair of linear equations meaning that you can write p q and 1 and then here you can write b c a and b and you need to remember to take the algebraic opposite of these two terms because this is c and they're supposed to be on the other side so b is negative 2 7 negative 2 7 and here this is negative 2 7 and c is negative 5 negative 15 negative 5 negative 15 and a is 7 and 8 so then what you can do is that you can write this as uh, basically p over 2 times 15 is equal to positive 30 minus negative 35 so plus 35 is equal to q over <coughs> negative 40 minus <coughs> minus um, 7 times 15 is equal to Mm. Uh, 70 35 is 105 70 35 is 105 is equal to 1 over 49 minus and here you get a negative so plus 8 16 so so that's 49 minus actually plus 16 okay so now 30 plus 35 is, is equal to 65 65 is equal to q over 105 minus 40 is equal to 65 and that's equal to 1 over 49 plus 16 is equal to uh, 66 65 okay and you can divide all the numerators by 65 you get 1 one and one and so p divided by one is equal to one q divided by one is equal to one so that means that p is equal to one and q is equal to one now over here we said that over here we said that so p is equal to one and q is equal to one so so basically we said that p is equal to 1 to y p is equal to 1 to y so so that means that that means that 1 is equal to 1 to y so that means that y is equal to 1 and over here we said that q is equal to 1 to x so q was equal to 1 so 1 is equal to 1 to x so x is equal to 1 So now if you take any of these equations, for example, 7x minus 2y over xy, that's equal to 7 times 1 is equal to 7, negative 2 times 1 is equal to negative 2, 1 times 1 is equal to 1, that's equal to 5, and that's basically the, the, basically the answer that you have over there. Or let's say that you have, uh, let's say that you have some other example, something like this, for example. Let's say that you have 6x plus 3y, 6x plus 3y is equal to 6xy, 
and 2x plus 4y, 2x plus 4y is equal to 5xy. Okay. So now in order to solve this, what you can do is that, is that you can, um, let's see how we can solve this thing. Okay, so what you can do here is that you can basically divide by xy every term in, in these equations you can divide by xy so you can write this as 6x divided by xy plus 3y divided by xy is equal to 6xy divided by xy and also divide by 3 because you want to get rid of these coefficients as much as you can so divide by 3, divide by 3, and divide by 3 here. So this would be 1, this would be 2, x and x will cancel out, y and y will cancel out, 3 and 3 will cancel out, 6, that's a 2, x and x will cancel out, y and y would cancel out. And then here you have 2 over y, here you have 2 over y, um, plus uh, plus uh, uh, 1 over 1 over x is equal to 2 so that's one of your equations this equation over here again you can divide by xy so you can write 2x divided by xy plus 4y divided by xy is equal to 5xy divided by xy and there is no coefficient that I can divide by, meaning that there is a 5 over here. There is no need, there is no point in dividing by coefficient, by constant. So these two will cancel out, these two will cancel out, and these two will cancel out. And so you will have uh, 2 divided by y, 2 divided by y plus 4 divided by x is equal to 5. So I call this, for example, equation number one, and I call this equation number two. And then you can, in these equations, you can substitute, for example, substitute, uh, for example, P for one divided by Y and Q for one divided by X. Okay, and so the equation number one becomes uh, two times one over y plus one over x is equal to two, and equation number two becomes two times two times one over y plus four times one over x is equal to five. And so you can then rewrite this as do the substitution here, P for 1 over Y. So 2 times P plus 1 over X is equal to Q is equal to 2. And then here you have uh, 1 over Y was P. So 2 times P plus Q. So Q is 1 over X. So 4 times X, 4 times Q is equal to 5. And now you can do, for example, do solve this with the method of elimination, for example. So I call this, for example, equation number three, and I call this equation number four. Now, if I multiply equation number three by a factor of four, what I will get is uh, 8p plus 4q is equal to 4 times 2 is equal to 8. And so I call this equation number 5, for example. And then equation number 4, I can write it as it is 2p plus 4q is equal to 5. This is equation number 3. Okay, now I can 
take the receipt, take, take the algebraic opposite of these terms and add them together. So then 8p minus 2p is equal to 6p is equal to 8 minus 5 is equal to 3. So that means that p is equal to 36, which is equal to 1 half. So if p is equal to 1 half, then for example, take this equation number 3 and write 2 times p, which is equal to 1 half. Uh, plus q is equal to 2 these two will cancel out so q is equal to 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 which is equal to 1 q is equal to 1 and p is equal to 1 half 1 half and 1 so over here what we had was uh, where were we I think we were we took basically over here we said that p is equal to 1 by y and q was equal to 1 by x now p is equal to 1 half so 1 half is equal to 1 by y so y is equal to 2 and uh, q is equal to 1 so that means that 1 is equal to 1 by x so that means that x is equal to 1 okay so 1 and 2 so x is equal to 1 and q is equal to 2 I'm sorry y is equal to 2 y is equal to 2 now, um, the equations that we had were uh, 6x plus 3y, 6x plus 3y is equal to, for example, 6xy. So, 6 times 1 is equal to 6, 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and that's supposed to be equal to 6 times 1 times 2 so that's 12 is equal to 12 which is actually correct and the other equation that we had was 2x plus 4y is equal to 5xy and 2 times 1 plus 4 times 2 is equal to 5 times 1 times 2 so that's 2 plus 8 is supposed to be equal to 10 and 10 is equal to 10 okay so that's basically how we solve this problem we have we have two more of these and we will then we will do them in this video and then there is some more exercises that we can do in the next video as well okay so there is one more type of question here that is also interesting but it gets a little bit more complicated meaning that we have to do basically two uh, two uh, two steps of substitution in order to, to solve this, this kind of problem. Meaning that, for example, um, for example, in the previous examples, we had over, we had two over, for example, square root of x, for example, plus three over square root of y was equal to one. Okay, and then we got, we rewrote this as 2 times 1 over square root of x plus 3 times 1 over square root of y is equal to 1. And then we took basically 1 over square root of x as p, for example. And we took, for example, we, we took, for example, 1 over square root of y as q. And then we had some other we had some other, for example, equation as well, where 
basically we had also the same thing for example 5 over square root of x minus for example 6 over square root of y is equal to some number a for example so you see over here you have 1 over square root of x here and 1 over square root of y here so so that's why you can for example take 1 over square root of x as p and 1 over square root of y as q and then you can simply substitute p and q in these equations and then you can solve the problem as we did before but there are situations where this kind of thing is just simply not possible because for example let's say you have 10 over x plus y plus uh, 2 over x minus y and that's equal to 4 for example and then you have 15 over 15 over x plus y minus 5 over for example the same thing x minus y is equal to negative 2 and and then I mean the only thing that you can do is that um, uh, you can take um, you can rewrite this as for example you can rewrite this as 10 times 1 over x plus y plus 2 times 1 over x minus y is equal to 4 and okay so that's that's good and then you can write this as for example of course i did i did solve this in a in a in a, in a slightly different way but let's see how this works out so 15 times 1 over x plus y minus 5 times 1 over x minus y is equal to negative 2 okay so now i can take for example 1 over uh, I can take for example 1 over x plus y as p for example and 1 over x minus y I can take it as q for example and if I substitute p and q here I would get 10p plus 2q is equal to 4 uh, it's, it's, it's again the same story meaning that you, you would get two two steps of substitution and here again you have 15 1 over x plus y is equal to p so p minus 5 q is equal to negative 2 and now you have a a set of um, a set of basically uh, a pair of linear equations okay and then somehow you need to solve these problems we can simplify this a little bit for example write this as um, divide everything by 2 here so you get 5p plus q is equal to 4 i'm sorry divide is equal to 2 so 10p divided by 2 is equal to 5p 2q divided by 2 is equal to q and 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2 and here i write the same thing 15p minus 5q is equal to negative 2 and now I can I can take this as equation number 1 and take this as equation num number 2 and then I can take equation number 1 and multiply by a factor of 5 for example so I would get 5 times 5 is equal to 25p plus 5q is equal to 10 over here and then i can write the same thing i call this equation number three and write two as it is over here so 15 p minus 5 q is equal to negative two it's the same equation that we had up the up here and now i can just simply add these two together and the two q's will, will simply cancel out and this is 40p is equal to um, 10 minus 2 is equal to 8 so that means that p is equal to 8 divided by 40 
which is equal to 1 divided by 5. So 1 divided by 5, 1 fifths P is equal to 1 fifths. And then you can take any of these two equations over here, for example, you can take 1 and write 5 times P, which is 1 fifths plus Q is equal to 2. So this is equal to 1. So Q is equal to 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1. So Q is equal to 1. Okay, so now you know P is equal to 1 fifths and Q is equal to 1. But over here we said that um, we said that basically p and q were equal to 1 over x plus x plus y and 1 over x minus y. So again you have to set to to basically uh, uh, solve another linear another pair of linear equations to get to x and y. Okay, so I write uh, one one over x plus y this was p basically so p is equal to one fifths okay and one over x minus y one over x minus y is equal to is equal to q so q here was equal to one okay so So then you can cross multiply here. You can write, for example, x plus y is equal to 5. And this one you can write x minus y is equal to 1. Is equal to 1. And then you have this pair of linear equations. This pair of linear equations, you can use the elimination, simply add them together. These two will cancel out. So you have 2x is equal to 6. So x is equal to 6, 6 divided by 2, which is equal to 3. So your x is equal to 3. And then if you take, for example, this equation up here, x plus y is equal to 5. So 3 plus y is equal to 5. So that means that y is equal to 2. So that is basically the value of x and y. If you if you want to test this, you can write this as, for example, one of the equations where 10 over x plus y plus 2 over x minus y was equal to 4. So 10 over x plus y, so that's 5. x minus y is 1. 2 over 1 is, is supposed to be equal to 4. That's 2 plus 2 is equal to so that's the solutions are correct and the, there is basically something similar to this situation we can we can do as well as the last exercise over here and that is this one for example 1 over 3x plus y so you have 1 over 1 over 3x plus y plus 1 over plus 1 over 3x minus y that is equal to 3 fourths 3 fourths and 1 over 2 times 3x plus y 1 over 2 times 3x plus y um, minus 1 over 2 times 3x minus y is equal to negative 1 8. So you have this, these two equations and you want to solve them. So you can, you can take this as again, for example, you can take uh, basically 1 over 3x plus y, you can take it as p, for example, and you can take 1 over 3x minus y, you can take it as q, okay? So then you can write this as um, p 
plus q is equal to three fourths p plus q is equal to three fourths and uh, this is one half I mean one half times this 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 thing over here is one half times one over three x plus y so 1 over 3x plus y is equal to p, so that's 1 half p, 1 half p, minus 1 half q, 1 half q is equal to negative 1 eighth. Okay, so now you have these two equations, and you can solve them, meaning that, um, so first of all, what you can do is that you can write, for example, multiply everything by 4 here for example so 4p plus 4q is equal to 3 and multiply everything by 2 here so 2 times 1 half is equal to 1 so that's a p and that's 1q is equal to um oh sorry i i, I wanted to I could have actually multiplied by 8. That would have been easier. So 8 times 1 half is equal to 4. So 4p minus uh, 4q is equal to negative 1. Okay. So then if you want to solve these two equations, you can just simply add them up. And 4q, this is q actually. This is supposed to be q. Okay, so now these two will, will, will simply cancel out and then you have 8p is equal to 2, so that means that p is equal to 2 eighths, which is equal to 1 fourth. p is equal to 1 fourth, and then you have, you can use any of these equations to, to calculate q. So you have 4 times 1 fourth plus 4q is equal to 3, so 4 times 1 fourth is equal to 1, 1 plus 4q is equal to 3, 4q is equal to 2, so that means that q is equal to 2 fourths, which is equal to 1 half. So your q is equal to 1 half. Okay, so now what we said was that, basically we said that we took 1 over 3x plus y as p, which is equal to 1 fourth. So this is 1 fourth. And 1 over 3x minus y as q, which is 1 half. So this is 1 half. So what I can do is that I can write this as 1 over 3x plus y. 1 over 3x plus y is equal to 1 fourth. And uh, 1 over 3x minus y, 3x minus y is equal to 1 half. Let me write this properly. 3x plus y. Okay. Now, if you want to solve these two equations, you can... Uh, take the reciprocal of both sides of this equation, you'll get 3x plus y is equal to 4. And take the reciprocal of both, both sides of this equation, you get 3x minus y is equal to 2. Okay, and then use elimination, add these two together, you'll get 6x is equal to 6. So x is equal to 1. And then 3 times 1 plus y is equal to 4. So 3 plus y is equal to 4. So y is equal to 4 minus 3, which is equal to 1. So your x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. Now if you, if you want to test this, what you can do is go and pick one of those 3x plus y plus 1 over 3x, 1 over 3x minus y okay is equal to three fourths 
So if x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, I have 1 over 3 times 1 is equal to 3, 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. And 1 over 3 times 1 is equal to 3, minus 1 is equal to 2. So that's equal to, that's supposed to be equal to 3 fourths. And take LCM as 4 here, 4, 1, 2 is equal to 3 fourths. So 3 fourths is actually equal to 3 fourths. And that's basically your answer here. Okay, so that's basically how you solve, for example, this kind of problem. Now, we have a couple more examples here. Actually, there is still a bunch of them that I can, that I can work on. So we will go over a couple more of these. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.